Hey, Pastor Thomas here, and we're looking at the sacraments. And sacraments are these uh, outward instruments of inward grace. And we're still looking at the Lord's Supper. So today's question is, who might rightly partake of the Lord's Supper? Who might rightly partake of the Lord's Supper? And the answer is those who repent of their sins, trust in Jesus, live a godly life, and profess their faith before the church. Now, this is a longer answer than we're used to, but those who might rightly partake of the Lord's Supper, those who repent of their sins, trust in Jesus, live a godly life, and profess their faith before the church. So, repent of their sins. We've looked at this before. Repenting of your sins is walking down a road and realizing that you're a sinner. You sinned against God. We, the catechism question says, what is sin? Sin is a, any lack of conformity to or transgression of the law of God. That we disobey God's law. And we're walking down this road of disobedience to God's law. And repentance is stopping. And turning around and going back to the right road that we should be walking down. And that's what repentance is, that we realize we're a sinner in need of a Savior. And the next one is that realizing Jesus is that Savior. When we look at uh, trusting in Jesus, we've looked at this before as well, that, that we realize that we are dirty sinners in our clothes, and Jesus takes our sin, but doesn't just wash our sin away. He gives us His righteousness as well, that Jesus didn't sin. So when we think about the Lord's Supper, this is what it represents, that Jesus took our sin away from us, that His, he, uh, his body sacrificed for our sins, his, body, his, his blood shed for our sins. And this is what we look at, that they repent of their sins, trust in Jesus, and live a godly life. And we've looked at this before as well, that living a godly life means that you realize that you don't want to walk down that wrong path again. You want to glorify God and be Christ-like as a true follower of Jesus. This is what you are called to do. And then the last thing is repent of your sin, trust in Jesus, live a godly life. And the fourth thing is profess your faith before the church. Now, you might be baptized as a baby and you are a church member. We call that a non-communicant member. That you're baptized, you're a member of the church, but you have not yet professed your faith before the church. And this is the difference between baptism and the Lord's Supper. That once you profess your faith before the church, then we say that you rightly, uh, you might rightly partake of the Lord's Supper, that you profess your faith before the church. And this is the difference. You go from being a non-communicant member to being a communicant member, someone who can partake of the Lord's Supper. So we ask in our church, you go and meet with some elders and you talk to them, but you just answer five questions. And that's basically what this question looks at, that you repent of your sins. That's question number one. Do you realize you're a sinner and you need a Savior? Question number two, do you realize that Jesus is that Savior for your life? Number three, do you realize you need the help of the Holy Spirit to help you walk a godly life? Number four and five are still about walking that godly life with uh, wanting to seek the church to grow through its worship and work, and then finally to be able to to love the church, to be able to see its peace and purity grow because you love Jesus and you love what Jesus has given His church and, and that you wish to desire to walk in that road. And that's what the difference between baptism and Lord's Supper, just like as, as circumcision and Passover in the Old Covenant, in the New Covenant, we see that baptism is for believers and their children. But the Lord's Supper is for those who rightly partake or those who repent of their sin. Trust in Jesus, uh, walk or live a godly life, and finally profess their faith before the church.